Hi, this is Curtis Thompson with 320 Workshops. Today's video, we're going to build a panel and framed top for a dresser remodel that I'm working on. We're gonna go through the veneering and all the design process all the way through the finish. So stick around, see how it turns out. So, what we did was start off with a design sheet like this. Um, basically what I was trying to do here was roughing out what I was working with. These are the, all the dimensions and the design of just the top, just the looking at the top itself. I also took the dimensions off of the veneer, so I had that to work with. And then I took it inside and took it to my computer and I drew up a rough sketch of what I wanted this to look like. So, to give you an idea, this is what I was working with. Um, these lighter parts of the veneer panels and then we're having the rails out of the walnut. Um, so I got this all designed up and I laid out and you can see there was some kind of funky joints here at the top. Doable joints, but they were still a little bit funky looking. And I didn't think much about it. I came out and I started laying out things and thinking about how I was going to do this. And I realized that I was going to have four boards with ingrain showing at the front. And that wasn't really going to be acceptable. So I had to scratch that idea. Then I came up with this layout of what I've got now is one long board here with the scallops cut into it and a, and a shallow angle here to match these um, we'll call them styles coming across towards the front and that way the end grains all hidden I still have end grain at the end but I'm okay with that um, they're going to be rounded like that I think that's going to look really nice now the problem was I, need, I had a limited piece of veneer that I wanted to use so I had to make sure that I was going to have enough veneer so I laid out my flitch in the four pattern that was going to be in and I said okay I'm going to cut off a piece here and a piece here for the ends so that that will be one continuous piece even though I have it break, broken up these four become the center panel and I've got 16 inches this way and I've got one 8 inch uh, a 20 and a half inch and an 8 inch so those are my rough pieces that I can cut out of it and when I did up my final drawing of how this will look you can see that i've got um sorry a little crooked there um so what i've got is one long piece with this kind of arc in the middle and an odd little angle in there and these panels are going to need to be 14 and a quarter inches and i've got seven and three quarters and 20 and a quarter here so they, the way I'm going to cut the veneer will work on this. Now, this front piece, I've got a couple different ways of doing this. I could cut the whole piece out, dance all these grooves in. Uh, but I think what I want to do is I threw this into an SVG file, and I'm going to drop that into the Shaper Origin, and I'm going to cut this out with the Shaper. I think it'll be a little bit more accurate that way. And... Um, you know, I've got the tools, so I might as well use it. That's what I'm going to do with that. Get all these roughed out and get this started. One of the mistakes I make with Shaper Origin a lot is the tape. It watches that tape and I put it too close to the Shaper and end up having to stop and rescan after I added some more tape, but it worked out okay. So once I got it cut out I um, and I got all the other pieces cut out, I started cleaning up all the edges with a hand plane. 
I wanted to get everything smooth before the next process. And some places were a little easier than others. Some of these smaller places I ended up having to use a card scraper, but that got in there pretty simple and easy. I checked all my joints to make sure they lined up properly. Now I don't like starting off the day by screwing up. I'm putting the styles and rails at the top together with uh, a domino. And I got everything set up, did my first piece, looked at the bottom, and the domino had actually come out. I mean, the, the cut slot had actually come out of the bottom. I failed to tighten down the height adjustment. So, my fault. But what we're gonna do, instead of replacing this, I do have other walnut, but since the surface isn't ruined, I'm going to take this, I'm going to take a domino, glue that in place, cut it off flush, then redo the, the slot, and I think everything will be just fine. No one will know, well, if you looked under the underside, you'd see that, but no one will know the difference other than that. So I think it'll be fine. Let's get going and fix that. So here I'm taping the veneer pieces together, getting ready to glue that up for the uh, final top panels. Then I'll cut the, the entire piece into the three panel sizes that I need.
Now to start the gluing process, I'm going to roll on some Titemon cold press veneer glue on both the uh, substrate and the veneer itself. Get a good coating on it and lay it on top. Um, I'll give this a little bit of a roll to kind of get it to stick where I want it. But as you know, with the glue, it's starting to roll up or curl up now because of the, the moisture. So I gotta hurry and get all of them done. I get the, the two small panels and then the large panel, again, gluing both the substrate and the veneer. And I'm laying on a bigger panel so that I can cut these pieces to size when it comes time. Here's where I'm making another error. Usually I use like a butcher paper that has some um, wax on the back side of it, like a wax paper on the back. And for some reason I didn't put that on there and I used that um, craft paper. And you'll see in a little bit where that becomes a major problem. Now I'm gonna stick it into the veneer I, or I'm sorry, the vacuum uh, bag so that I can get this pressed down real good. I propped up the flatten with a, just a stick so I can get in there nice and easy. I am trying to hurry here because I don't want the, the glue to set up too quickly. I have plenty of time, but I like to make sure I don't abuse that time. Now I can get the veneer pump or the vacuum pump started. And that'll really give a lot of pressure to it. Now after about an hour and a half, two hours, I'll open up this veneer, or shoot, um, vacuum bag. Now there's a little mesh that you put over top of it to kind of help the air circulation around that platen. And there's the platen. It's just a piece of melamine that I've rounded over the edges on it. This is the, the problem piece. I didn't realize it until right about now. And I, what it is is that burled veneer has a lot of holes in it. So the glue kind of came up through and bonded to that craft paper. And it was a mess. The other pieces, I used wax paper on it and it came right off without any problems. So I began scraping off that paper with a card scraper. It, it wasn't hard to take off, but it just really did take a, a, a while to get rid of it all. And of course using um, a wet rag and a scraper to get off the uh, veneer tape. Ended up, it was fine. So first I want to do is I'll seal the veneer with a little bit of um, sanding sealer. Just, you know, a de-waxed shellac. <clears throat> Now once the frame was all put together, the way I was going to put the panels into the frame was with a slot in both the panel and the frame, and then I'll use a spline to hold it all together. Now the two middle pieces that have kind of an odd angle to it, I, you couldn't put the domino in there, so I will slot that and put a small spline in that as well. All the rest of them have a domino in them. Here you see I'm cutting that groove for the spline in these pieces. Now to make sure everything fit right, what I did is I started at one end cutting each panel to fit the area. I'd get that completed with the spline and then move on to the next one so that I didn't have any uh, mishaps with the sizing using a shooting board to get it down to just the right size. Now 
did take a fair amount of trimming to get it the way I wanted it. And once I was good with how it fit, I'll put a groove around that panel for the spline to fit into that. Here I'm cutting those splines to length. It's just the um, quarter inch Baltic birch. Then I'll get this one all fitted in and clamped in place before I begin to measure off that next piece, the center panel. Here what I was doing is because it's a book matched piece of veneer, I wanted to try and make sure that they, the center point ended up at the center of the panel. So I was measuring out from that on each side to carefully make sure that all lined up into the middle of the final panel. Once I got all it, it all trimmed up, did the same thing, putting a groove in it, adding the spline, and I'll put this in place before moving on to the, the third and final piece. Now that last piece needed a little extra trimming just because it was trying to get everything uh, fitted just right. Now as you can imagine, all those pieces lining up, I wanted to get the back piece completely um, even. So I double face taped this whole assembly down to a piece of plywood and ripped off just a little bit at the back end. What I had done was when I put the dominoes into the back piece, I drilled it in for a um, 50 millimeter domino and then I fitted up those back pieces with a 40 millimeter domino. You can also see there where I had messed up that original first domino into the frame. Give it another clamping with the dry fit to make sure it's all going to fit up just the way I want it to. those pieces in together and then gluing it up using hide glue here and while there's plenty of open time on that hide glue this was definitely one of those ones where you felt the pressure of getting it all glued up quickly Probably be helpful if I could really move this fast to get it done. Clean up some of the squeeze out, get all the boards lined up, and then let it dry overnight.
All right, back in the shop the next day, and we're going to get this out of the clamps. Do a little final touch up with the card scraper to get it all even. And then put a, um, an edge on the, the uh, front and sides using kind of a slight round over, I think it's called like a Queen Anne edge, top and bottom. Just kind of use some sandpaper to knock off anything sharp. And then we're going on to the finishing stage. The first thing I'm going to do is put a couple coats of shellac on the top. Um, Now I'm trying to match it to the rest of the cabinet, so I'm using some toner spray to kind of bring the color in just a little bit at a time until I get it to match the cabinet itself. It was an old walnut, so it had um, a little bit of a I guess orangey tint to it um, and working it with that toner spray uh, got it to match pretty well. And then a few more coats of shellac once that dried. Then I'll attach the top to the cabinet itself. And this was simply just putting some screws in from the underside of the cabinet into it. Nothing special here. I wasn't dealing with too much wood movement because of the panels were being, uh, were made of uh, uh, Baltic birch plywood. And once it's done, get it out of the clamps and she's all finished for the top. So I've got a full video coming out with the um, build out of this entire remodel from a vanity to a dresser. And I got another video out with that center drawer being made. So check those out as well. And thanks for stopping by.